I'm going to talk a little bit more in depth about the way the translucent water shader works. So the first thing I'll do is obviously open up the shader uh, and zooming out we can see there's a couple of different areas of interest within the shader. Uh, the first, I'll clean up because I think there's a few extra nodes here. The first is the projection of the uh, camera through the water surface. So here we have the absolute world position, which gives me where the pixel is in space. Uh, and then I'm taking the water height away from that. And this is defining where vertically in the world the water is. Uh, this is the value that gets set by the blueprint. Uh, for defining the uh, water surface uh, so that our depth calculations work correctly. Uh, the next is the scene depth and the pixel depth. Uh, this is giving us the, uh, the camera's uh, projection into the surface. So I, I will actually get a depth result uh, on the surface. It will look like a grayscale version of uh, how far away things are after we're, we've looked at the water surface. Uh, and that's done uh, through this bit of math where we take the camera position, uh, bias it based on the water height, uh, and then subtract and multiply this against the, uh, the world position uh, and depth of the pixels for the water surface. Uh, here we're actually combining these down into a final mask. Uh, and this doesn't work well inside of the preview because there's no depth in this scene. So the end result is a mask that projects the uh, depth of the world relative to the surface of the water. So uh, it's not just based on uh, how far away from the origin of the world uh, a given surface is, it's based off of where the water is. Um, here we're taking the water depth and dividing that by that mask and this gives us a gradient from the surface of the water down to however far this water depth is. Uh, we then power this mask to uh, modify the fall off. So if we want something that becomes very deep very quickly or if we want the shallow bits to last longer, we modify this depth power value. And you can see that here. I'll do it inside of the uh, instance. So finding that depth power here and look down as I change that value you can see the the deep becomes uh, extremely stark and pushed down where the shallow lasts much longer. Back inside of the shader uh, we then clamp that mask so that we don't have anything uh, outside of the 0 to 1 range. Uh, and that's lurping between the uh, shallow and deep waters. So this, this gives me the mask that defines wh where these two colors appear. Uh, and then that's blended into what will eventually be the final input for the shader. Um, this other branch is defining the opacity for the shoreline and that's where the shore depth value comes in. Uh, it's then fed in to a minimum shore opacity and the base opacity. So if I wanted to say clamp the the shoreline so that it never quite became completely translucent, I could do that by increasing that value to 0.2 in this case. And now even though um, it fades out quite a bit, it never completely fades out all the way. Uh, if I set this up high enough, I would get a completely opaque uh, surface no matter what my uh, surface depth was set to. So that ends up being my final opacity mask, or my opacity value for the surface. The metallic value is set to 0.8 because I thought it, it came up with a, uh, it gave a very nice result, uh, not for any physically correct uh, reason. So. That's how we're doing the actual uh, deep parts of the water. Here, we're also blending in the uh, color for the surface of the water. So, for example, here we're taking the world position again and defining the values for both the variation material, which you see here. 
So it's very soft, but there's a, a flow uh, going there that will end up looking something like this. And this is giving us a nice, softly moving, uh, low contrast variation to the scene which allows me to blend between different types of waveforms and not get too much tiling, uh, which is where it's being uh, used here, is to blend between uh, two different types of roughness, for example, uh, and then that's used as our final roughness value here. And then below that, we're using the same uh, world projection to blend between multiple uh, normal maps that are making up those, those waves. And then the, again, we have a noise that's being used to break up the results of those two normal maps uh, to some degree so that we don't get uh, only a single water pattern on the surface. We can have as much or as little uh, variation noise as we want based on the variation amount. So now the still parts of the water actually have some amount of wave, but it's very, very slight and does not move very much, whereas the uh, the not other side of the variation is very, very uh, animated. So by blending these two together a bit, we eliminate a lot of tiling artifacts, and at the same time we get um, an interesting surface. So the way this material is used inside of the blueprint Inside of the construction script, we uh, do the same initial water creation that sets the X and Y extents of the water surface. But in addition, we're also getting the actual world location of that plane. So we know where in space that is. We only care about the Z va value. And then we are feeding that in here to set the water height. So I'm sampling its position in space and then using that result as a scalar parameter that I'm automatically setting. So whenever you place this uh, blueprint in the world, it automatically reads that value and uses it to correctly do all of the surface and depth calculations that it needs to get the nice shoreline and the depth values. And then here we also have all of the additional values that uh, I've created inside of the shader uh, exposed so that you can very quickly and easily set them inside of the blueprint properties. Uh, meaning that you could have multiple of them in the scene with different values and it will all work. So if I just take a few of these meshes and duplicate it over and put it underneath, you can see I have a nice amount of visibility. One last thing I'll talk about inside the material is the refraction. So I have um, a little bit of refraction going on but not through the typical uh, refraction uh, values. Instead what I've done is I've taken the scene texture and blended um, a little bit of the distortion from the normals through the scene texture here. So I'm taking the base color of the final rendered scene and distorting it slightly uh, and then feeding it back into the final shader. Uh, and I'm doing this based on the depth of the scene. So very shallow areas will not distort as much and deeper areas will distort more. And this gives us a nice amount of variation without having to hand build all of that uh, behavior in. It just works.